I've been asked to talk on what is simply titled Prayer Principles for Divine Enlargement. I particularly put the word divine there because enlargement can be by man, but the enlargement we are talking about this day is the enlargement by God. And so what are the prayer principles that we need to be able to become enlarged? When you read in Isaiah 54, the Bible says in verse 2 and 3, it says, Enlarge the place of thy tent, and let them stretch forth the curtains of thy habitations. It says, Spear not, lengthen thy cords, strengthen thy stakes. It says, For thou shalt break forth on the right hand, and on the left hand, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles, and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Enlargement is a prophetic declaration. Every one of us, many are wearing t-shirts which is written boldly, enlarged. The theme of this convention is enlarged. And we believe God, the prophecy had gone forth over us, declaring that enlargement season has come. But every prophecy is just a proposition made by God to us. A proposition that is saying, this is what God intends for us. It's a proposal of God. Now, there are a few things you need to do to respond to that proposal. So I'm going to be asking about five different questions, even this morning, by the grace of God. The number one question I'm asking is, what is your response to the proposal of God? What is your response to the prophecy of God? There are different ways by which you can respond to that prophecy. You can either accept it or reject it. When you read in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, in verse 13, the Bible says that the word of God which we preached unto you, which indeed was the word of God, you did not receive it as the words of men, but as the word of God. Then he said, the word of God which effectually worketh also in you that believe. This word, this prophecy, we only walk in the heart of the person that accepts it and believes it. So the second point is you must believe that word. You must receive that word. When you read in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, in verse 20, the Bible says, believe, your prof believe the Lord your God, you will be established. Believe his prophets, you will be established. I believe there is somebody hearing me this morning by the mercy of the living God. As you believe the word of God that has been given to us, the prophetic word of enlargement, you believe God, you will be established. You believe his prophets, you will have success. By the mercy of the living God, you will prosper in everything that you do in the name of Jesus. Number three, you must prepare for the word. When that prophetic word has been given to you, you must prepare for it. For every prophetic word, there must be a prophetic action. What did the man of God say even to that king? He said he should strike the ground in 2 Kings chapter 13. When you read in verse 18 and 19, and he struck the ground three times, and the prophet said, Why only you have done it several times, then your victory will have been total. But now you will only prevail three times. So when they say you will be enlarged, let it be that you decide to take an action in the direction of enlargement. I believe God with somebody today that where you are today will be the least you will ever be in the name of Jesus. I say from today you will be carrying steps even in the direction of enlargement in the name of Jesus. Number four, you must engage in warfare for the prophecy to come to pass. Pastor Shola told us earlier this morning that prophecy needs process for it to come to pass. I want to say to you that prophecy needs prayer for it to happen. Prophecy needs that you engage in warfare. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, when you read in verse 18, the Bible says, My son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that you by them may be able to war a good warfare. You want to war a good warfare? A prophecy has been given to you. In the New Living Translation, the Bible says, based on the prophetic words spoken about you earlier, may they help you fight well in the Lord's battle. There is a battle that you are engaged in. 
life is not a fun fear life is warfare matthew 11 bible says in verse 12 says the time of john the baptist the kingdom of god suffered violence and only the violent take it by force you remember when god gave joseph a dream from the day he had a dream warfare started in his house when god said to samuel go and anoint david to be king in israel from the day he was anointed king in the house of his father warfare started the warfare with the lion the warfare with the bear the warfare with goliath the warfare with king saul who was sitting on the seat that was meant for david i pray today that according to the prophecy given concerning you even if somebody is sitting on the seat of your prophecy you will engage in warfare and you will prevail in the name of jesus if you are going to prevail say i will prevail I will prevail. My prophecy will come to pass in the name of Jesus. Remember the story of Isaac. The Bible makes us to understand. God gave him a word and declared to him and said to him in Genesis 26 that Isaac, stay in this land. I will prosper you here. I will make you great here. And the Bible says from the day God made that declaration and Isaac began to know increase in the land, Bible tells us that they envied him and they wrestled with him. But Isaac didn't stop until God took him to a place called Rehoboth. And he said, now God has made room for us and we shall enlarge in the land. I am saying to somebody, there's a place of enlargement for your prophecy. There's a place of manifestation for your prophecy. There's a place of resolve for your prophecy. But to get to that place, you must engage in warfare. Can somebody say engage in warfare? The next question that I have for you is, who are you engaging in warfare? Many of us are engaging our enemies. Many of us are engaging the men that are around us. We are in warfare for position. Warfare for title. Warfare for one thing or the other. And we think it's because of that brother that we are not getting to where we ought to get to. When you read in the book of Isaiah, in chapter 62, between verse 6 and verse 7, he said, I have set watchmen upon thy wall, so Jerusalem. We shall never hold their peace, day nor night. He said, you that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. And listen to this verse 7. And give him no rest till he establish, until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Many of us are engaging with men in warfare, where we should be engaging with God. He said, give God no rest until he makes you a praise on the earth. In Proverbs 25, when you read in verse 2, the Bible says it is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but it's the honor of kings to search it out. Your promotion, your lifting, your enlargement that is concealed by God. As you begin to engage with God, as you begin to contend with God, you will get it in the name of Jesus. The glory of God is to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to do what? To search it out. How many kings are in the house this morning? How many kings are in the house this morning? Everything that is the promise of God concerning your life, you are collecting them in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, say better, amen. I'll tell you a story from Genesis 32. The Bible makes us to understand when you read in verse 26 and verse 28. The Bible says that Jacob was wrestling and he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And, he's, and God began to ask him, he said, what is your name? And he said, my name is Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, as thou power with God, and with men has prevailed. And I read that same scripture from the New Living Translation. And the Bible says that your name shall no longer be called Jacob. Your name shall be called Israel. He said because you have fought with God. And you have fought with men. And you have prevailed. The story of Jacob is interesting. The name Jacob simply means the one who wrestled with men. 
the one who is the supplanter when he was coming out from his mother's womb he was holding to the heels of his brother and from that moment he kept wrestling wrestling with men he wrestled with jacob he ran to the house of laban he wrestled with laban and now god said come and show up at the altar better where i met with you but on the way to the place he wrestled with god and he prevailed and god said your name shall no longer be called jacob your name is actually supposed to be israel and what does israel mean the god fighter the one who wrestled with god i pray today that there shall be an identity change where you have been wrestling with men for blessings where you have been wrestling with men for promotion you will start wrestling with the most high for your lifting in the name of jesus if you believe it say better amen I would like us to put this scripture on the screen if we can in the book of psalms psalm 4 when you read in verse 1 the bible says hear me when i call O god of my righteousness he said thou hast enlarged me when i was in distress have mercy upon me and hear my prayer a day comes when you begin to be god focused than enemy focused a day comes when you begin to realize that if God bless you, no man can take it away from you. A day comes when you begin to realize that the attention you are given to fighting the enemy around, if you give that attention to pursue God, you will prevail. I pray that somebody will pray that prayer in Psalm 4. And if you can rise up on your feet wherever you are, as they put that scripture on the screen, he said, hear me when I call. Oh God of my righteousness. He said, thou hast enlarged me. When I was in distress, have mercy upon me. Can you lift up your voice for one minute and say, hear me when I call. Hear me when I call. In my distress, give me enlargement. In the name of Jesus. In my distress, give me enlargement. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. I pray for divine enlargement. I pray for enlargement. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please be seated. We read the story of Jabez. When you read in First Chronicles in chapter 4, the Bible says from verse 9, And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, because I have him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thy hand might be with me, and thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And the Bible says, God granted him that which he requested. I like the way it is put in the New Living Translation. The Bible says, Jabez was the man who was more honorable than his brothers, and the Bible says he was the one who prayed to the God of Israel. And that is taking us to another point this afternoon or this morning. When you want to have divine enlargement, you must, number one, I say, what is your response to the prophetic word? Number two, who are you engaging in warfare? And number three, how have you engaged? How? What is the method? What is the attitude? When you read your Bible in the book of James in chapter 5, the Bible says in verse 16, it says the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. How Jabez cried to God defined what he got at the end. I want you to know something about what Jabez prayed. He said, oh, that thou wouldest enlarge my coast. Thou wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my coast. He was simply saying, enlarge my boundary. Enlarge the frontiers of where I stay. And I want you to know that the word boundary is the combination of two words. Bound and area. It simply says, an area where you are bound. An area where you are limited. An area where you cannot go beyond. And I am saying to somebody, every boundary of limitation that has been put over you, God is enlarging you even beyond that boundary in the name of jesus and so when we are saying enlarge my coast enlarge my boundary what we are saying is oh god break the limitation over my life break the limitation 
and there are different kinds of limitation that can be over the life of a person number one the limitation of sickness there are people that are not getting to where they ought to get to in life because of one infirmity or the other one man was by the pool of bethesda for 38 years in john chapter 5 but one day jesus showed up for that man in the book of Luke, in chapter 13 when you read in verse 11 to 16 there was a woman that was bound with infirmity for 18 years i know of one or two people that couldn't finish university all just because of ill health every time they're about to write an exam sickness will show up but i pray for you today where infirmity has been the limitation of your life that limitation is taken away in the name of jesus there are also limitations from the womb limitations that come even before you were born it followed you from the womb when you read in the book of of, of, of acts chapter 3 between verse 1 and 9 the bible said there was a man who was by the gate called beautiful he was lame from his mother's womb but one day peter got there and the limitation was taken away by the mercy of the living god every limitation from your mother's womb every limitation that followed you to the earth the limitation of jacob was from the womb but one day that limitation was taken away by the mercy of god the limitation of your life is taken away in the name of jesus rise up on your feet one more time and say father every limitation of my life take it away today in the name of jesus every limitation every limitation whatsoever is limiting me i pray that you will take it away i pray that you will remove it lift up your voice lift up your voice pray that prayer pray don't stop limitation must be taken away by the mercy of the living God it will not stand in your life anymore limitations are removed today the barriers are taken away in the mighty name of Jesus thank you blessed father in Jesus mighty name we pray I'll give you one more scripture before you sit down Job 36 when you read between verse 8 and verse 12 i don't know if they can put it on the screen job 36 verse 8 and 12 i need somebody to read it loud if you can get a mic and somebody can read it loud it will be good come and read it here come 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 And if they be bound in fetters and beholding in courts of affliction, then he showed them their work and their transgressions that they have exceeded. Verse 10, he opened, he opened also their hair to discipline and commanded them that they return from iniquity. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. Verse 12, but if they obey not, they shall perish by the sword and they shall die without knowledge god has shown you this morning what many of you have done that has not allowed you to be enlarged or to be prosperous in life he said he will show it to you if you repent and you obey him the bible says and you serve him he said he will take away that iniquity 
and the bible says you will spend your days in pleasure and your years in prosperity i know an altar call has been made already but there are still hundreds of you that are supposed to come out and say lord i repent i am asking you for mercy you can't be asking for divine enlargement except you have repented from that which god has shown you wherever you are hearing my voice this afternoon or this morning i want you to come to this altar and say lord i am coming in repentance i am coming in total surrender come and kneel down at the altar of the lord in total surrender to the living god to say god have mercy on me i did this wrong i committed this offense i did this that i shouldn't have done and as you rush to the altar mercy will locate you in the name of jesus i want you to keep coming keep coming keep coming quickly mercy mercy you are repenting of that which you have done and you are saying lord have mercy on me come and kneel at the altar of god now come and ask god for mercy i am asking for your mercy today i am asking for your mercy i'm asking for your mercy lift up your voice and begin to say god have mercy on me have mercy on me have mercy if you are coming come quickly keep clapping for jesus as they come keep clapping don't stop clapping Let them kneel down let them kneel down allow them to kneel down just let them kneel down they are kneeling down at the feet of jesus ask god for mercy this afternoon ask him for mercy asking for mercy today i'm asking for your mercy let mercy speak in my life let mercy minister to me in the mighty name of jesus let mercy minister to me today maybe if i share this story with you it may help you many years ago we were ministering deliverance and a young lady who was in the law school in abuja came forward and as we ministered to her a voice inside of her cried out she cannot amount to anything and that voice which i learned what is your name it happened to be the voice of someone that was her boyfriend when she went into university by the grace of god we prayed for her that yoke was broken what happened was this sister jilted the brother but the person she jilted was somebody in the occult and held her bound and there are things that are holding you bound they will let you go this afternoon wherever you are come forward and say have mercy on me that thing will not hold me captive anymore to the most high it will not hold me captive anymore i receive grace in the name of jesus i receive unction in the name of jesus the hand of god will be mighty over my life thank you blessed father glory be to your holy name in jesus mighty name we pray father eternal we thank you for the vessels that have come forward this morning we pray oh lord that your mercy that keeps a man that mercy will keep them it will not allow them to be swallowed whatsoever has spoken contrary to their well-being we command it to cease in their lives in the name of jesus let this day be the day of a new beginning of glory for them in the mighty name of jesus thank you blessed father in jesus mighty name we pray god bless you Please follow the counselors and they will guide you in Jesus' name.